Mm -hmm. Okay, so who was in group one? Do we know the, do we know what numbers our groups were? Yeah, no. we, were, we were group one. <laughs> I, I took the notes for group one uh, so I could go. How much time? You have uh, two, approximately two minutes. We are gonna go to 725. So if we have a, quite a bit of time here. 725 Central Database. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, those time zones. Um, so uh, we were uh, Shari Stuber, Alan Stockbridge, Conrad Williman, Jessica Parfrey, and myself. Um, and so some points, key points from question one uh, was, these are really big questions uh, that are difficult to answer on the spot, uh, but uh, we did have some good ideas. Uh, we do need some kind of a new story. Uh, there was a question about whether we should continue to call ourselves transition. Um, challenging dominant narratives, uh, like humans are not part of nature, technology will save us. Um, emphasizing diversity, community, and connection. There was another uh, question about who is the we here? Um, and what are the commonalities that really bind us together as a movement? And I said, you know, I think what binds us together as a movement is, uh, one, it's our view that uh, things are just fundamentally unsustainable as they are, that they need to fundamentally change. Everything needs to change. Uh, that we have eight principles of transition uh, that are held throughout the international network. And we have a basic approach to, you know, how we create a transition initiative from scratch and how we build resilience from the ground up. So, I think those are three things that can kind of bind us together. Um, and that we need to say that we're trying to create not just a more sustainable world, but actually a better world for everybody. Um, you know, that might be somewhat obvious to us, but it's really important to say that uh, being involved in transition leads to a more meaningful, satisfying, and creative life. Um, that this is really amazing work. Uh, and then a few more points on question two. Uh, we talked about the importance of having different messages for different people and different audiences, how to make it relevant. Uh, one key thing is that transition can be really a ray of hope amidst despair, uh, both for its kind of positive solutions focused uh, approach and because there's this, this global network of all these people doing all these cool things um, that we often don't hear about uh, on the news. Um, and then we, we also talked about the importance of connecting people up with some kind of community or action. Uh, that a lot of people who come to transition are doers, uh, that they want to make, that they're not satisfied with just talking endlessly about these things, but actually want to do something. And so really asking them what fires them up and then try to connect that to something that's already happening or a group that already exists. So they don't just go, oh, that's interesting. And then they never think about transition ever again. Uh, once they have that kind of foothold, then they can find their own way. But oftentimes, you know, unless somebody's a real kind of go-getter, uh, it, can, it can be helpful to help them find that first foothold or handhold uh, in transition. So that wasn't everything that we talked about, but hopefully that was a decent 
a summary of our key points. And uh, I don't know if we have time for it, but I would welcome any other group members to share if they feel I missed anything. Did we have just three groups? We have five groups. Five groups, okay. Great job, Don. Who is group two? We were, Leslie. Yes, we were. <laughs> okay. Um, does, does someone else want to give a thing, or I'm the note taker? Should I give <laughs> a rundown? But you feel free to chime in, anyone. I'm uh, Chad Polari, and my group was uh, we had Leslie, Mackenzie, David Cobb, and William Much, and I'm Chad Polari. Um, we got it. We were, you know, we were kind of more free forming a little bit. I don't know if we exactly focused on the questions and Don went over a lot of the good stuff. Um, you know, basically I had, I, I was kind of, I was kind of coming from a place, a little bit of frustration, really trying to, trying to figure out how to draw people in and really spread our message. And, um, I got some more of the wisdom from the more experienced people. But, uh, one thing I really liked uh, that I took away from it and um, I would say when my group I kind of stay away from controversial subjects or stuff that you could really get into and it seems like the other the other three members really inspired me by saying that was their most successful way of getting to people was really bringing up the conversations that I like, as William put it, that ended most other conversations <laughs> that you know the, the, the topics that other people were afraid to talk about. So, uh, and David's group, uh, Cooperation Humboldt seems to be very successful. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't believe the numbers he was throwing at me. <laughs> I'm still looking for a few core members, but, and I like how, you know, he said that, um, we really talked about people who want to be in leadership roles. He focused on almost like vetting them out and really making sure that they're, you know, aware and go over, you know, many, many different topics. And uh, Leslie was about to go into something similar uh, when the time ran up. But uh, I think that was a big takeaway from our group. And again, please feel free to chime in um, that, that may, you know, maybe taking on the interesting or, you know, quote unquote, tough topics might be a really great way to reach out, especially to younger people, which seems to be a challenging for some. But again, anyone else in my group wants to add something, please do. Um, I am going to move us to the next group, to group number three. That's, that's me, and I've lost my notes, so give me a second. And I'm going to ask group number one to please put your notes into the document. Okay, here we go. Uh, so uh, we were, um, group three was Rua, Christina, Linda and myself. Um, and I guess I would say in response to the first question, um, really kind of the answer we came up with, uh, is that the kind of activities we do sends a message about who we are. So we didn't spend a lot of time working on, you know, what that, um, you know, I, defining who we are. Uh, we just let our actions speak for us. Uh, we had a period of self introductions uh, and a theme really came out of that, that um, the way to, and, and I think I heard this from Don as well, and, and uh, mid group two as well, that um, there's a theme of connecting with folks both in and, and out of transition um, through active work, um, gardening, perma blitzes, repair cafes, workshops, um, learning events, transition streets, cleanup days, things like that. Uh, when people are working together, uh, they feel connected. Um, and um, passions, I think I heard that mentioned as well. Passions are really important. Asking people what they, uh, what really drives them, what they're passionate about, and then connecting them uh, with people who can help make uh, something like uh, they're interested in happen within your group is something that really connects people. Um, Let's see, um, sharing meals together can help connect people and make them feel like they're part of the community. Uh, 
sometimes um, one person in our groups said that sometimes there's an attitude that the problems that we face are so big that it, it really isn't almost worth trying to do anything about it because uh, we're so small. And uh, trying to, to spread the message that lots of small actions um, by working together can, can add up to, to, to big changes is an important message. So rest of group three, any, any additional comments? Okay, how about group four? Hi, that was um, me, Shelly, Paul, and Jane. Um, I feel like our, our conversation was pretty expansive, but some of the key points were, um, Ah, let's see, expanding beyond our own bubble, including um, having language that works for kind of power holders in the existing um, dominant system and thinking of ways to engage with them um, besides just organizing at the local level or as we're local organizing at the local level, being sure we're able to engage with the like power holders in our communities um, and rethinking and rebranding our um, economy. Um, the piece around what Mark just said about um, focusing on, you know, using what we do show who we are. Um, there was a good example of that with the repair cafe and like the joy that comes from doing that or community gardening. Um, I just think that's a really sweet um, example illustrating what Mark was just sharing. Um, people describe our work as a movement to build the local economy and local culture by connecting with each other to become more interdependent. Um, localization is going to happen, so we might as well figure out how to try to live that way. Um, the pandemic has shown how vulnerable globalized economy and supply chains are. Um, we talked about some local groups being past the honeymoon phase and dealing with a lot harder um, things, which changes the way we talk to people <laughs> when we start getting into things like power dynamics. Um, we talked about the ideological foundations in ourselves and in our institutions that make them exploitative and addressing that, so speaking to that. And we talked about the, the transformative impact transition has on the individual level, becoming an extraordinary leader during extraordinary times. Um, and I just wanted to speak to a theme I've heard in a few other groups harvest, um, which I think is community organizing, just the basics of, um, you know, having one-on-one -on -one meetings with people to understand what their interests are and then plugging them in in a way that satisfies their needs and motivates them. Um, so it's not just communications, it's community organizing, and that's a really important piece of our um, Transition 2.0. I think stepping up our community organizing game and making sure we are plugging in people in that way at all levels of the movement. <coughs> Anyone else from group four? Did I miss anything important? Oh, I'll say um, some of the language used around uh, connecting to power holders is middle out instead of just bottom up, but middle working both directions. I would just like to add that Jane and I connected on the idea of making lists of groups that are already doing great work in your community as a way of beginning your, your transition group. Can we hear from group number five? Hi, everyone. Um, a lot of what we discussed has been mentioned already. Um, so I'm going to just focus on some of the few things that um, we dwelled on because it, it, we felt it was pertinent. 
um, when we discussed who we are, <laughs> we brought up the question of, do you mean our local initiative or the national group or the global group? Or is it our planet and those who are aware of what's going on on the planet to, and are mobilized to ensure survival, not just of our species, but all life in balance on our planet. So um, that kept moving the conversation from a very minimal local conversation to broadening the, the uh, lens we were looking through, which adds so much. But we also then realized that in some of our communities, we had a very diverse communities in our group. It was uh, Suzanne, John Foran, Renee, and me. And um, some of them, uh, like, uh, um, I think it was Renee mentioned that uh, she worked in a city setting, but then moved four hours north into a rural setting. Um, and, you know, they were completely different people. So what was important, what was, uh, you know, what to mention, to get involved would be different in each group. Um, and what every one of the groups that went into their lo local work that they did um, found that hook that everyone else has met and mentioned, which is what interests you. And this is, you know, we've already looked at this issue and we accomplished this and, you know, getting people's interest up by just talking about what they've already done and where they are planning to going and um, making it almost like dangling candy and making it exciting so people wanted to jump in. But also doing that with groups uh, that are already there and really making a point of connecting with them. One of the things that uh, somebody pointed out is that for those of us who are older, we have family members all over the country. So the we gets extended already outside of, of the wherever the, they are physically. Um, some of them in our group worked with people who were from other countries, refugees and people who, who, who immigrated. Um, and when you say we, in their minds, often it was the people back home in the country they came from and also starting to be the local group. So the, the, the conversation was extremely broad and how to connect all of that uh, was very rich. One of the things we realized is that uh, we could talk about the global, local to global on an intellectual level, but in some ways the connectivity happened just because if you make something fun enough, people want to come do it. People want to be involved. It's, it's like design 101. Make the fun thing that's also what the behavior you're seeking more fun than the behavior you don't want to promote. <laughs> And so just creating that kind of meet and greet atmosphere and, uh, and making that something up front um, and an, an intention up front is often very, very um, positive with its results. Uh, did I leave anything out? Anybody? No? You know what? It's just time. And I'm going to... I'm going to take two minutes. Can we get two minutes? Is there a theme that appeared in your group that didn't get covered in this feedback? Marissa, did you have something? Okay. I'm going to add one thing that came up in our group, and that was kind of the staying power of permaculture and the the themes of permaculture and the ethics of permaculture, you know, in 15 years, it's held up well, the same with food and the centrality and sharing of food. Um, that's me. Yeah, Jane. Uh, one, one thing that Paul was talking about was about, uh, in, in our group was about the, uh, transition knowledge as a um, as a sort of subgroup that he's been interested in. I don't know if you want to say more about that, Paul, but 
we were intrigued by that idea. No, our, our group transition use, uh, as John and Shikari uh, can testify, we're, we're throwing out different names and eventually I think we'll, we'll uh, resolve around one of them. I'm, but it, we all agree that transition knowledge is the most abstract. So we're kind of struggling with what, what we really want to name it. But I think it could differentiate our movement uh, by building our own ontology that really makes those connections across uh, a lot of different movements. So that was what our topic was. Dan, Dan? Yeah, something I said in my group that I think bears repeating in this larger group is, um, you know, one of the first rules of communication is show, don't tell. Um, so I think it's great for us to have a great story, you know, and use beautiful words, all of that stuff is super important. But if we don't have the on the ground impact in the stories to back it up, um, I don't think we have very much. So I, I just wanted to kind of bring that point out there because it hadn't been mentioned yet. Uh, and I think uh, it's crucial for us to pay attention to that moving forward. We are two minutes before close, and I am sadly going to end the conversation and turn it over to Rati with next steps. Awesome. Yeah, thank you all so much for all of your incredible insights. Seriously, <laughs> typing away, and we harvested a lot. Um, this does bring us to our the end of our meeting today, and I, I just wanted to thank you again for spending this time with us because. This is this input here is really is what's so valuable in guiding the strategic plan. So from this, um, the Transition US board and staff will be uh, drawing on these insights and also the other conversations to create a strategic plan um, to serve the needs of our whole movement. And um, we'll be making blog posts summarizing the outcomes of this session as well as all the other national network strategy conversations and we'll share those out um, our next National Network Strategy Conversation will be in one month on September 22nd. So they're every like third-ish Tuesday or so. Um, and that one is going to be on strengthening the trans grassroots transition network. Um, and that conversation is going to explore how Transition US and other stakeholders can enhance connection across the network, um, support local transition initiatives, um, and get established to demonstrate the impact in their communities. So a lot of what was talked about here is gonna be kind of expanded on in the next session. So hope to see you all there. Um, as always, just feel free to reach out to us with any questions and um, thank you again. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Okay, goodbye everyone.